Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Your friendly neighborhood Tank Jones with you, aka the Healthy Heart Addict, with another video from the Healthy Heart series. This one is going to be on plaque. What is it? How does it form? And what potentially are some of the things that we can do to lessen it and potentially get rid of it? Now, I am not a doctor. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. This is for informational and entertainment purposes only. I just happen to be a guy that had two Widowmaker heart attacks, survived them, so I've done a ton of research and I continue to do research on things that affect the heart. And I wanna give that information to you so you and or a loved one can find out the information they need to hopefully live a happier and healthy life, particularly as it relates to the heart. So consult your doctor, but this is good information. Okay, so, and also, as always, if, go ahead and click that like button and the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos that I've created, uh, entertainment and also things on the heart, uh, click the bell icon so as soon as I upload a video, you'll know and you can see my smiling face for you again. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. So, plaque, what is it and how's it formed? Well, let's pretend this thing here and I'm about to draw this circle is the inside of your vein, your artery, okay? What ends up happening is this stuff that we all know, that we've all heard of, um, called cholesterol. Besides your red blood cells and nutrients getting through this thing, cholesterol from the foods you eat, even some natural uh, processes going on in your body flows through these channels. Sometimes it flows and it begins to stick to your arterial wall. So what does your body do? It almost treats it like a foreign substance. So it begins to send out little soldiers, which we all know are our white blood cells, okay? It sends white blood cells to really begin to start attacking this cholesterol that's now beginning to try to stick to your arterial wall. And when these two things begin to interact, they form this white foamy substance and it begins to ooze fat into this area, which is crazy. It begins to get stickier. So then another response, a defense response happens to defeat that because what it's doing is it's constricting the red blood cells that flow through here and the nutrients and everything else that tries to get through here, it starts to interact and constrict. So what does the body do? it forms a muscular protective sheath around that area um, so that the nutrients can get through a little easier without interacting with one another. But that plaque is now formed due to, those two, due to that interaction. So the muscular sheath forms, hopefully getting through so these things don't have to interact with one another. And even though the artery is more constricted, we can still get what's necessary and what's needed to other parts of the body, uh, including oxygen. Now, in my case and in other cases, what, in it, what can happen, this can be small, it can be larger, depending on how much cholesterol is going on and get bigger and bigger, okay? But <clears throat> sometimes people, particularly people that are at high risk for this thing rupturing, this, this new muscular sheath, it can rupture due to high blood pressure, due to some sort of stress. That's what happened to me, or that's what they surmise is what happened to me. Then this interacts and causes stenosis, which what stenosis is, is this, art, this wall, basically the whole artery begins to collapse, okay? Then the plaque is all in all the areas of the artery. It could be, and we've heard of blockage or occlusion, that's what it is. More and more plaque now, it's flooding, and this process is happening throughout the whole artery. It makes, it causes stenosis, all of the red blood cells, very difficult to get through. If it's 100% block like mine was, nothing gets through. And so your parts of your heart can collapse, um, which is what happened to me, and because no nutrients and no oxygen is getting through. So we want to avoid this. Okay, and what are some of the ways, what are some of the recommended ways to avoid this process from happening? Well, most of you, it's intuitive. You probably know what they are. The first one, diet. 
of course diet okay cholesterol comes a lot of oftentimes from what we eat it also can it's internal because your body produces cholesterol as well so don't forget that fact We're, we'll have another video to go over that but diet most of the time they recommend things from the earth less processed foods more nuts uh fatty fishes i know so everybody has their take on what diet is i suggest you research that or come back here when i make that video on some of the dietary suggestions but nuts vegetables fruits things from the earth okay another thing that they suggest that you do for uh my smokers that are out there in the house i know you're listening i know you're tired of people saying this to you but dang it it's time to quit okay because it's one of the things that actually contributes to this process it contributes to plaque crazy but um one of the things you got to consider so if you didn't have other reasons to consider it consider it for this reason here okay and the third one here that they recommend which i recommend no matter what exercise my brother and sister exercise i still exercise myself five to six times a week a stretch yoga uh some cardiovascular stuff and to find out how much you need consult with a doctor and there are other ways to find out uh, how much your body needs too but diet smoking and exercise can help prevent plaque lessen this hopefully reduce the stresses in your life so that if you do have plaque and this muscular sheath is formed um, i'm gonna go ahead and put that down because i wasn't but that actually makes a whole bunch of sense as meditation and prayer <laughs> okay so keep stress levels down keep your blood pressure down so it makes this less likely to burst interact cause stenosis and then you end up being rushed to the hospital and in need of a stent or something worse okay so if you found this information helpful like i said make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video share it with somebody information that other people that you know that might be dealing with some heart issues if they need this information make sure that they have it okay and as always what i'd leave you all with if you would like to find out more information about how your genes your dna your dna affects your overall health then i want you to go to dnatank.com right now and take the DNA test that they have on that website. They test 18 genes, everything from your immune response to genes that, that affect your heart health, okay? Know that information, get that information because it's always not readily available for you. And that information can help you live your best and your healthiest life possible, okay? And that's what, exactly what I want for you. So as always, thank you, blessings, blessings, and more blessings to you all. I'll see you next video.